Hello, my name is Matt Burns, and I'm from the University of Missouri. I'm going to be talking today about response to intervention for math, focusing on the intervention part. This is going to be a series of short videos making some points that connect together through an RTI framework. I first want to spend a few minutes talking about MTSS and RTI, what, what that means and what that is. MTSS and RTI are actually not interchangeable terms. MTSS is a systematic use of data to most efficiently allocate resources to enhance learning for all kids. So multi-tiered system of support is systematic use of data, efficient allocation of resources to enhance learning for all kids. If it's to enhance learning and academic outcomes, that's response to intervention. If it's to enhance behavioral outcomes, that's positive behavior supports. So positive behavior supports and RTI are both type, types of MTSS. And within MTSS, we have the three tiers, which everyone's familiar with, and I can talk about that. But we know that as, as we progress through the three tiers, we also collect data more frequently, and we collect, collect data more precisely. In tier one, all we need three times a year, can do math, can't do math. That's it. To systematically allocate resources to enhance learning for all kids, those three things. And then in tier two, we need, we need to assess probably once a week or every other week, and I only see can do math, can't do math, but what areas of math do they struggle? And then tier three will assess those kids at least once a week, if not twice a week. And then we'll do, uh, you know, can do math, can't do math, can do single digit multiplication, or for what facts does the kid know the, the answer? We collect data more frequently and we collect data more precisely so we can do more in-depth problem analysis. All we're doing in an RTI framework is answering three questions. Question number one, is there a class-wide need? Primary problem analysis question for tier two is, What's the category of the need? So once we've identified there's a need and fixed it, a class-wide need, now we can see the category of the problem for individual kids. And then lastly, what's the causal variable? And by causal variable, we mean the environmental variable we can manipulate that is most closely related to the problem. We're gonna talk about how to answer those three questions. In RTI framework, that's all you're trying to do. Answer those three questions. Is there a class-wide need? What's the category of the problem? What's the causal variable? But first, let's talk about the purposes of assessment, the data used to answer those questions. I'm gonna quickly put this up. Essentially, there's four questions. The first one deals with program evaluation. That's how we use the state test. I'm not gonna talk about that. It's an intervention framework. That's not really helpful. But within uh, our TI framework, screening, diagnostic, and monitoring student progress, those are the three decisions we make. So the first one is, which of your kids are not making grade level expectations? That's screening. Things like the STAR, measures of academic progress, MAP, those are all very good screeners. Then we go into diagnostic, what are the specific needs of a student who struggle with math? And then we, once you see the kid is struggling with a star map or something like that, then we dive in to get more diagnostic data. And then we tend to measure very specific skills. We measure their, their um, multiplication, their addition with or without regrouping, subtraction, et cetera. And then of course we monitor the progress. Now CBM is ideally, curriculum measurement, Dibbles, Ames Web, ideally suited to monitor the progress. But to get to screening, I'd probably be more likely to use something like STAR or MAP, and then diagnostic is a combination of the two, to really dive in and to see what specific skills the kid struggles. This is a study I did, published a reading and writing quarterly uh, with David Parker and, and several other people, and we wanted to see you know, what, which screener works well. This is based on an informal reading inventory. Uh, there's lots of them used, Fonts de Pinel, DRA, et cetera. So this is based on reading, but the principles still apply. So if we go into this, and I'm going to annotate this. So here we have Ames Web, curriculum based measurement for reading. That's this right here, Ames Web. And then our criterion is the map, the measures of academic progress. Our other measure we looked at is this informal reading inventory, which I won't sorry, the lines crooked, I won't say which one. But here we have in the map of this first set of kids, 900 kids or so in second and third grade. 646 kids did not do well on the map. And of those kids, 501 did not do well on Ames Web, which is, or I'm sorry, did do well on Ames Web, which is a 78% alignment. There were 322 kids who did not do well, and of those, 276 did not do well in Ames Web, which is, it's hard to see, so we can move this. Yeah, there we go. Get this out of the way a little bit. But that's a sensitivity, that's 86%, 0.86. 
Now, overall correct classification, 0.80. Not great, but certainly not bad. Now let's look and see the reading inventory. Of the kids in the study who didn't do well, who did, do well, did well on the map, 556 kids did well on the map, 367 of them also did well on the reading inventory, which is about 66%. A little low, but not horrible. Then there were 290 kids who did well, who did not do well on the map, and of those, only 90 did not do well on the reading inventory, which is 31%. So you can spend thousands of dollars to buy this test, take the time to train all your teachers, take 20 or 30 minutes per kid, or literally, based on this correct classification of 54%, give the teachers a quarter. And every time a kid walks in the room, flip it, and you'll get it right just as often. These types of measures are not designed to be screening measures, just, just regardless of what the publishers say. This is a measure designed to drive instruction, et cetera. It's not a good screener. So when we look at what makes a good screener, and we look at how we're using the data, I would suggest that these types of measures aren't very good for screeners. And instead, we should be looking at, I'm gonna clear this. Oh, here, clear. Okay. And instead, we should be looking at different types of screeners like STAR and MAP. The data we collect has to match the purpose for which we're using it. The other point, so, so I encourage all your teams to look at these four areas, to look at benchmarking, screening, diagnostic, and monitoring student progress. And to sit down and talk about it and see which measures you have and how they match this, this intervention, the, the, the areas, screening, using screening, diagnostic, or the monitor progress. And then real briefly, there's two types of math assessments. There's a general outcome measure, that's a measure of, is the kid getting better at math? And then sub-skill mastery is, is the kid learning a specific objective or skill? So STAR is a general outcome measure. MAP is a general outcome measure. Uh, even CBM, like um, MCOMP and MCAP, those are general outcome measures. But something like a sub-skill mastery measure would be a, a CBM type uh, measure of a very specific objective. And in an RTI framework, we really need to have both because general outcome measures will tell us that the kid's getting better at math the subskill mastery measures will tell us if the kids are learning the skill in which we're intervening. So again, go back and consider this and consider looking at monitoring progress of the skill and monitoring progress with a general outcome measure and look to see, do you have measures for each of these to match that particular purpose? And then lastly, one more point, within the math world there's five areas we think of in terms of proficiency, and I'm not going to spend time discussing each one, although they are in the, the, the PowerPoint and can be, can be looked at. But I want to focus on two, which is conceptual and procedural. Conceptual is the understanding that math involves a hierarchy of underlying ideas, and procedural is they can organize them and actually complete the steps to do the task. And here's a more specific definition. Again, I'm not going to spend time on this, but real briefly, conceptual understanding is the idea of the relationships, procedural knowledge is the steps to solve the problems, strategic competence is flexibly solving problems, adaptive reasoning is uh, development of learning to justify the correct answer, so understanding why you're doing it, and then productive disposition. And we th I'll go back now and think of interventions you have and see which ones do they address of these five. If the kid needs conceptual understanding, then you, 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 want, you want to do something like um, great leaps or peer assisted learning strategies. But if the kid needs to think of things more flexibly, contingent reinforcement does not help, cover copy compare does not help, um, goal setting does not help, etc. We'll stop there and continue talking about tier one classified problem interventions. <laughs>